Hey, this is David Burns with Green ID, and I want to talk about if you notice a super strong suction at your return, or the AC and heating system gets really loud at your filter every time the unit turns on, or if you notice a dust outline, a ring outline on your filter when you change it every month. A lot of homeowners ask us if that's normal because it may seem like there may be a lot of air pulling through that return and that could be a good thing. So in this video, I wanna go into what causes that to happen if it is a good thing and if it's not, what we could do to fix it. All those things I just listed are symptoms of the same problem and 90% of the time, it's not the blower speed that needs to be adjusted. I've actually rarely found that to be the case. What causes this to happen? What causes your filter to get sucked up into the return so hard it will actually collapse the filter? And the reason could be an undersized return, which means the return is too small. If you imagine breathing through one straw, we'd be starved for air really quickly. Our bodies couldn't handle it. We need actually a big volume of air to breathe in and a big volume to breathe out. That's what's happening with the AC system or heating system. When the return is too small, it's just too restrictive. You can't get enough air into the unit, and so it's going to be starved for air. It's going to try to... It's like your AC system has asthma. It just can't get enough air in, and that could be from the duct sizing. It could be from a hard kink in the ductwork, or a restrictive filter if you're not changing them every month, or if you've had a lot of people through and you get really dirty filters. You could be using the wrong kind of filter. And I know uh, the Home Depot and Costco's promote these filters as allergen reducing and dust reducing filters, but those are probably the worst filters you can have for your AC system. We actually prefer uh, a high airflow cheap filter to those one inch pleated filters. The best filter is gonna be a three or four inch HEPA filter that you could put in, and it doesn't restrict the airflow as much as those one inch filters but you still get good airflow because a three or four inch deep pleated filter has a lot more surface area for that air to pass through. So it's not as restrictive. Or a restrictive grill is being used. Builders will typically use the cheapest materials. So they put these highly restrictive stamp face grills on all homes and it restricts the airflow. We like changing them out to a bar type, a high flow grill. It has more net free area and allows more air to pass through that grill. So what if your return is restrictive? Uh, if you have a loud noise coming from it, that may be an inconvenience. I've actually had a home where we had to turn up the TV every time the AC system was on because it was just so loud. And then when the AC shut off, the TV was too loud. So we have to go back, turn the TV back down. That's how loud it was. But having a restrictive return is actually causing damage in other ways as well. And we need to enlarge in the return to get more air into the unit so you get more air out. Having a restrictive return is going to make the unit work harder. Your AC system, just like us, if we were breathing through one sipping straw, we'd be starved for air and overworked. Our body would be taxed. That's what's happening to the AC system also. You get decreased output as well. So your 5-ton AC system is probably working like a 5-ton, but you're only getting 4 tons of air out and it causes a noisy return. It causes uh, that wind tunnel sound through the return. We call Phoenix the land of no return because we only have one return per AC system. So a home 2000 square feet is gonna only have one return in the whole house. And that return is typically gonna be undersized from the start. So you can imagine how loud those get. One thing we do in our energy audits is actually measure the airflow and restrictions to see if that duct is sized right, if there's any restrictions in the ductwork, uh, the filter, the grill, any hard kinks in the line. And we can tell if the return is undersized or if there's any kinks or restrictions in the ductwork from a measurement. And how do we fix this? And so what we want to do is enlarge in that return. And there's a couple ways we can do this. Not, it's not sometimes as simple as adding another return, but that's the basic idea. We want to make that hole bigger either the existing hole, the grill and can itself, or add a second return and get more air into the unit. So if you have a package system on the roof, you wanna make sure first that you have a return plenum coming down in the attic and we can attach new returns or enlarge new returns from that. A lot of times it's pretty difficult to access and enlarge in the existing return on a package system on the roof. 
And then the other type of systems we have in Phoenix are split systems with the air handler or furnace in the attic. Uh, we also want to make sure we have a return plenum on that. And sometimes we can get away with enlarging the existing return without cutting any drywall out to increase that airflow. And sometimes if you have the AC system in the closet, we can add a side grill adjacent to the one that's existing and that would increase the airflow to the unit. There's a couple different ways to do that, but I wanted to make this quick video just to go over. If you see these signs of your filter sucking up in the unit, it's really loud, or if you have any dust patterns around the filter every time you change it, that's a sign that your return is undersized and you probably need some extra air into the unit. This is David Burns with Green ID, wishing you happy savings.